Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on complex numbers and it's an introduction to complex numbers. And really it's mostly just information, that's it, because I hope to do a bunch of videos on complex numbers, so I want to just explain the basics of it. Um, normally when we, we're thinking about numbers we're always think or usually thinking about the number line. And we know that in the number line we have positive numbers and we have negative numbers and it's it's just essentially a straight line, right? And whenever I'm talking about this I often talk about money in the bank because sometimes it's easier to think about the numbers that way. If we have money in the bank we're on the positive side. If we have overdraft then we're on this side. But the numbers still sort of move in this line, all right? However, when we're dealing with complex numbers, we need to be working on the x and y axis, okay? And there's lots of reasons why you have to do it, and one of them is um, AC circuits, so alternating current circuits, where certain, when you're dealing with inductors and capacitors, and you need to be able to work on the x and y axis, okay? So that's the thing about complex numbers, is we are putting the numbers on the x and y axis and so we're using vectors in order to solve for these questions. All right. <coughs> now with complex numbers as I said we're on the x and y axis so here it is y axis the x axis. The x axis is called the real axis. Okay. So this is the real axis and the vertical axis, the y axis, is the imaginary axis. And the imaginary axis is called J. Now it, if we had a particular line here, okay, we would, so here we have a vector and we could say that this horizontal distance, I'm just going to make something up here, uh, that could be 8 and the vertical distance could be 3. Okay. Now, this and it just shows up just like a vector, alright? We have a horizontal piece to this vector and we have a vertical piece for this vector. And that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with complex numbers. We're adding up numbers on the x and y axis. Okay. The other thing about this axis is we are, we're thinking about j, which is the square root of negative 1. I'm not really going to be talking about that very much. I'm more interested in your understanding or an understanding that what, what we do with what's on the real axis and on the imaginary axis. <coughs> okay. Now, there's two different forms for complex numbers. There's rectangular form and polar form. So, this here is rectangular form. So, what that means is the 5 here is on the real axis. The 3 times j is on the imaginary axis. And because it's a plus, plus 5, the plus 5 goes here. If it was a minus 5, we'd be going in this direction. And because it's a plus 3j, it's going up on the imaginary axis. And if we wanted to, we could solve for this component. All right? And that takes us to the next page. And this is going to be a short video, but again, it's just information. So rectangular form means we have the real piece and the imaginary piece written in this form. Now, same numbers. 5 plus 3j, this is in rectangular form. If we want it in polar form, we solve for the hypotenuse here. 
and the hypotenuse is the 5.83. Okay, and of course we'd use Pythagoras for that. So the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared equals the 5.83. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse, the 5.83, and we'd want this angle as well. And we'd solve for that angle by using inverse tan. So we know that this here is our 3. We know that that's our 5. And there's our angle, our 31 degrees. We, and if we're, um, excuse me, we're wanting to solve for that angle, all right, and let's pretend we don't know what it is. If we wanted to solve for that angle, we'd use inverse tan. So knowing this side is 3, knowing this side is 5, we can see that this side is adjacent the angle, this side is opposite. So in order to get the angle, we do tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent, and we do that, that calculation, so the inverse tan of this, and we end up with this angle, which is 31 degrees. And this is how it's written. So there's the hypotenuse, and there's the angle. So that's polar form, this one right here polar form for a complex number, and this is rectangular form for a complex number. And when you're dealing with um, AC circuits, that sort of thing, and vectors, this is something that you need to know how to do. Okay? Alright, so then that video, short and sweet, has been brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a good day. Take care.